Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Pardon uh, the voice. I had a dental uh, a filling done in my tooth, uh, TMI, but I am still waiting for Novocaine to wear off. It's been a couple hours. But anyway, so today I want to uh, share the new Lightroom tools. These are uh, new masking tools that are available in Lightroom 12.0, at least Lightroom Classic 12.0, which is what I use. And I just did the update this week and it's pretty cool. So I thought I'd share um, maybe an example of how you can use these tools and walk through my process editing a uh, cat bird, a bird that I took in pretty low light conditions and turning what um, might have been kind of a trash photo into something that's pretty cool using these tools. So with that, I'm going to screen share and we'll hop in and just walk through what I would do. It's actually a pretty quick edit, I think. So um, let's set that up. Okay, so um, as you can see, uh, this photo was uh, taken at extremely high ISO, uh, 12,800 ISO. And that's because it was a very dark situation and I was using a teleconverter. So this is the RF 100 to 500 that is normally a 500 millimeter lens using a 1.4 X teleconverter. So it became a 700 millimeter lens and a F10. I shot this at 1 400th of a second. So the cat bird was relatively stable and not moving. You can see it's actually a very sharp shot, um, which is why I thought I'd use this. Uh, so the eye is in focus, uh, the beak is in focus. You can even see all these beautiful details on the feathering here, which is why I think this is actually a pretty cool photo, even though as it currently stands, it's not so great. Now, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about why I don't think this is a great photo as it currently stands. For one thing, it's almost inverted. The background is brighter than the bird, and I want the bird to be the focus. The other thing is that it's a pretty... Um, jumbled image. You have all of these twigs and, and uh, branches kind of in the foreground, the background, the leaves, everything's a very complicated image and it's a little hard to focus on the bird when you have all of this additional um, kind of garbage really uh, in the image. So the goal of the edit is to focus our attention on the bird and to central place the bird kind of in the center of our of our focus um, both literally in in a cropping sense but also um, as a kind of um, edit um, to focus our attention on the bird so that's the idea using these tools so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to mask i'm going to rather crop to a four by x four by five x crop which is what i want for instagram and it's actually kind of a nice framing here with the um, with the kind of the sticks forming a V focused on the bird. I want the bird's eye to be rough, roughly around the top third of the image, which is sort of using a rule of thirds framing. And, uh, and we're just going to use it, uh, to crop it like that. And that's actually a pretty nice crop. Um, so I am happy with that. I might just center the bird um, rather than an off center thing. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so. Let's talk a little bit about the new tools, uh, at least from a masking perspective. So if you click the mask option, which is this circle here, um, it opens up. Uh, I've already actually have it, so let me delete that. So it opens up the masking here, the options you have here. So the new, the new feature they added was background. And I think what background really is, is just subject. It's an invert of the subject. So if you, if you were to have clicked subject, and mask just the subject, it's just doing the bird. And then if you click invert, you end up with the background, right? But if you do the exact same thing and just click background, it's the same selection. I think it's exactly the same thing. So it's really not that much of an addition. Um, it's what I was doing before anyway, which was subject, subject selection and then inverting. But it is a very straightforward and easier way to do it. And so what we're going to do is select the background here. And what I'm going to do is just try to downplay the background as much as possible. And there are a couple approaches to doing that. The first thing is I'm going to drop the exposure of the background a lot, really bringing up the bird um, in, relative to the background. I'm going to drop the blacks a little bit as well to further do that. And then I'm also going to drop the clarity in the background, which will give it a little bit. You can see increasing clarity kind of brings it into focus or at least sharper. Decreasing clarity is going to make it a little bit more blurry, almost like depth of field blur. 
And then I'm also going to decrease the sharpness a little bit and the saturation a little bit. And so I'm going to toggle before and after. You can see before and after is pretty dramatic. It actually looks to me like what I've done is really brought the background more to an exposure that's akin to where the bird was when I photographed it. So you can see it's uh, really downplaying the background. The next thing I'm going to do is the inversion of that, which is select the subject. So now we're going to select only a subject, and I'm going to bring the subject brightness up a little bit. I'm going to bring the whites up a little bit, being careful not to overexpose. And I'm also going to bring up the sharpness a little bit. And um, I want to make sure I don't overdo it with the um, contrast up a little bit with the, with the feathers here. So I'm going to bring down the highlights just a tiny bit here. And I'm pretty happy with that. I might actually increase it exposure even further of the bird just to highlight the frame, the bird in the frame. And what I'm concentrating here is these feathers here. I'm wanting to make sure that those aren't overexposed. One thing uh, in doing this that I realize is a little bit different with the new version is it used to be that you would click kind of a done. I think there was like a done button um, when you were in a when you were in a um, in a uh, in a mask. And now you don't. There's no done. So you can either push escape or you can push the mask button here and it will bring you back to the center to the basic uh, global edit console. So I'm going to zoom in here and you can still see a lot of great detail in the image and that's what I wanted here. Now finally I think the eye and um, the uh, and the beak could be brought up even brighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and use the brush tool. None of this is new so we're just going to use the brush here and um, be careful to not select um, the background. In fact, here it's better to, to err on the side of caution, select less of the bird than to select more of the background. Okay, I'm going to bring these up a lot as well, including some of the shadows here, quite a bit, you can take it, and that looks really good to me. Okay, final thing here is I want to do the eye. Now, these birds, these cat birds, have a beautiful eye. It's a brown, like hazel kind of colored eye, maybe just like a light brown eye. And so I'm going to select the eye here and just up the whites a lot and drop the blacks a lot. Um, increase the clarity a bit and the saturation a tad just so we can see that eye. Okay. And that is it, <laughs> basically. That's the edit. Um, so you know, not not a huge not a huge change here. We can play around with different um, profiles here, but I think the standard works well. So you can see the before. You know, really, even after the crop, um, kind of ignoring the bird, not really seeing it, and then the after, which really has this bird popping. I think. One other thing we could do here is maybe brighten this area up a little bit. Um, just so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna select, just gonna select here. And just bring up the shadows a little bit. And that is it. That's my edit. So I hope you, you also think that's a pretty good Edit. I'm actually quite happy with that. I think it, it highlights the bird compared to the background, but it uses these new masking tools. Um, one other thing that I think is pretty cool, um, and I didn't use in this tutorial, but I think it's worth mentioning, um, there are two things I was going to mention. So one is, in the masking functions now, you can select objects. And this is pretty cool. So you can do mode, which is the brush, which is this object brush here, or you can select this box. Now this box is going to essentially use AI to find the object for you. And you can draw a box around your subject and you'll see it selected a slightly different um, set of the image than um, the initial subject recognized. So the subject selected just the bird here, you can see, but it missed the feet and it didn't select uh, this, this twig over here. Whereas the object selection selected the bird, got the tail, which is pretty cool. You can see it missed the tail on the other one. 
and it got the feet. So it actually is a little bit different. I haven't used that in this image, but there are um, there are actually applications of this that I've found to be really useful, like for example, a skyline of a city. Um, and where you can use that box to select the entire kind of skyline at the horizon. And the software does a really good job of selecting the um, skyline in a way that object selection would not have previously done. So there are definitely some really neat uses there. The other thing that's worth knowing about is the um, new object erase option, which is really content aware fill from Adobe Photoshop. You might be familiar with that. So if you select this, we could, for example, erase this whole twig. And it will do an okay job doing it. I don't think that it does as good a job as Adobe Photoshop does. And let's just demonstrate that, for example. So this is what it did when I just selected the, um, the twig. So let's redo that just so you can see it. All right, so here we are. Um, we're in Photoshop. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing in Photoshop. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to go to the lasso tool and I'm going to select basically the same thing as I did before. I'm not even doing a great selection here to be honest. Um, I'm tired. Uh, so I'm going to select here and that's it. All right. Now I'm going to hit delete, which is the content to wear fill. And we're going to see how Photoshop does it. Perfect, honestly. I mean, sure, here there's a little bit of a mess here, so let's fix that. Um, well, we can kind of mess with that a little bit here. And then this section here, I'm not crazy about, so I'm gonna move that. Pretty good. So honestly, I think that's really, really good. So let's just save that. I'm gonna go back to Lightroom, where it's been saved, and you know, you can see before and after, before and after. And if we were to go back to the before and I did it, you know, exactly the same thing I did before and I try to remove it and I let show you how it worked. So, you know, it did an okay job, but I would say, you know, Photoshop does a better job with this kind of thing still, which I find kind of interesting because it's the same technology as I mentioned. But anyway, those are tools that, uh, that are really interesting that were added uh, to Lightroom so far. Uh, hope this is interesting and useful for you. I think you can see how you can turn old photos that weren't um, as eye-popping or as interesting or as well exposed as, uh, as you wished into something a little bit more interesting and useful and um, yeah, appealing. Uh, using these tools to isolate the subject and uh, and remove the background or, or basically underplay, downplay the background. So that's what these tools are particularly useful for, in my opinion. And uh, I will see you at a later date, hopefully with more mouth function. Take care. Be well and get outside. Bye-bye.